I'm trying to understand the topic of our uh, video today, but I just don't get it. I mean, what is this sleep thing? I don't get what that is. Why would an AI voice need sleep after all? You know? You know what I'm talking about? All right, let's get started. Parents of sleep talkers or sleepwalkers, what gems have you to share? Story 1. We were freshly married and living overseas. My husband hadn't had much sleep the nights before, which usually enhances any sleep talking. It was hot in our room. My husband mumbled something which I didn't quite catch. I asked him to repeat it. He got up, opened the bathroom window, and said very pointedly, Airflow, shrew, and then laid back down, completely asleep. Now, my husband has never, not once, ever called me a name or even raised his voice to me, so this is particularly hilarious. I love how you capitalized the word shrew. He used it like a proper noun. Well, I really hope this got chalked up to sleepwalking. This reminds me of that South Park episode where Cartman pretends to have Asperger's syndrome so he can just say whatever the hell he wants. Maybe this guy just needed to call his wife a shrew and pretended to be sleep-talking. You never know. Story 2. I'm the sleep talker. A long while back, my fiancé was working a job where she didn't get home until after midnight. She came home one night and was leaning over the table on my side of the bed. She swears up and down that I looked up at her, smacked her on the top of the head, and when she asked what the hell, that I told her that I was checking to see if she was a ghost. Now, I do remember having a dream like this, but in my dream, my hand did go through her head, proving she was a ghost. Hey, again, this sounds like someone just using sleep talking as an excuse to get away with certain actions. Ah, uh, this is probably not the case. To me, I would have woken up if I felt my hand actually hit something. That's the part that's weird for me. I wonder how often the fiancé or now wife reminds this guy that he did this. Maybe it's a story they tell at parties along with the cute way they met. Story 3 Roommate freshman year of college was a sleepwalker sleep talker. We were in the freshman dorms, small little room. I woke up one night and saw him sitting straight up on the side of the bed, just staring at me, eyes fully open, just talking gibberish about golf. He was going on about Phil Mickelson or some stuff. I have to be honest, it was creepy as all hell, because he was staring directly into my eyes. Next morning, I told him about it, and he just laughed and said, Sorry, I tend to do that from time to time. I'm sorry to tell you this, but he is possessed by a golf demon. You need to make an offering of ten golf balls and a three iron to it, or it shall never leave him. No, you're gonna want a wedge for that. The real kicker would be if he actually doesn't know a thing about golf at all. Is he a golf fanatic in real life? Does Sleepwalker him have different opinions about different golfers than Awake him? Has he ever recorded himself at night to see what kind of stuff he's actually saying? Story 4. I have had funnier experiences than this one, but cannot remember exactly what was said. Most recently, though, my boyfriend scoots over to me to Big Spoon Little Spoon, and I snuggle in, thinking that's all it was. Then he got real close to my ear and whispers, Just so you know, there's something in the closet. Like a cartoon turtle. I did my best not to bust out laughing and just said, Okay, honey. When he woke up, he had no memory of it whatsoever, of course. Were you the slightest bit concerned about the cartoon turtle? I would have checked the closet. Then you would not survive the horror movie. Story 5. He got up, went into the kitchen, and ate one bite of a mini pecan pie. No fork, just a straight bite then apparently remembered he hates pecan pie and left it stacked neatly on the little box. Another time, he sat up and stared straight ahead at the wall, didn't respond to me asking what was wrong. He stood up, walked into the wall, then stood there like he was contemplating the barrier. He just backed up exactly as he came, sat down and swung back into bed like nothing happened. That was creepy. I was in my brother's room watching TV with him, and he ended up falling asleep. He mumbled something about Arizona, and when I asked what he said, he didn't respond. Then a few minutes later, he sits up, squints his eyes, and just scans the room back and forth. I asked if he was okay, and he laid back down and went to sleep. 
I still don't know what he was scanning the room for, but it creeped me out. Kind of sounds like my friend sitting up and going, Salt! Where's the salt? And just sat there looking around for a few seconds before going back to sleep. Story 6. My aunt likes to tell the story about her and her cousin sharing a hotel room one time. My aunt woke up having to pee and found my cousin sitting up in bed with her arms folded across her abdomen, kind of rocking back and forth and giggling quietly. When my aunt asked her what she was doing, my cousin said, I'm holding a baby, and it has an adult smile. I found this story deeply unsettling. Get the holy water. That sounds like possession. That's not sleep talking. You need to get an exorcist in there right now. Then you need to call Blumhouse Productions and get ready to sell the rights to the story to them. I'm sure they're going to want to make a movie out of it. Story 7. He started shouting that he couldn't feel his left arm. I pointed out he was pinching his pillow, not his arm. He then freaked out that he had lost his arm. I pointed out his arm was under his pillow. He said, okay, and started snoring. It took me another hour to get back to sleep. He didn't wake up at all. That sounds like he was high. Story 8. My mom sleepwalks sometimes. When she was in the middle of her residency, she came into my room in the middle of the night and sharply asked, Did you give patient her dose of medication like I asked you to 15 minutes ago? I groggily replied, Who? What? She just huffed and said, Well, I guess that answers my question, before turning around and leaving, without closing the door, of course. She didn't remember a thing about it the next morning. What is it with moms never closing bedroom doors? It transcends age, race, location, and all other demographics imaginable. If you're a mom, bedroom doors do not close. It is the way. To the moms reading this, be the change. I always close the doors, but my wife never does. Our daughter says she always knows who's been where because of this fact. Story 9. My girlfriend was sleepwalking one night. Her. Can we get that done this week? Me. Huh? Her. Can we get that done this week? Me. Sorry? Her. Can we get that done this week, please? Me. Okay. Her. Thanks. My husband once sat bolt upright on bed and announced, You're not working hard enough. I have to fire you, and went back to sleep. My husband sat straight up and yelled, What the hell? and laid down again, got all cozy, and not another word from him after that. Freaked me out. The people in these stories sound like they need a little more work-life balance. It sounds like they've been working so hard that their work is seemingly taking up brain cycles during their sleep. I've had that happen before. The worst is when I'm working hard to make a deadline on something. Then I know I have the day off the next day, but I dream about it, and it just sucks when I wake up, because I know I have a day off, but my brain still wants to concentrate on this stressful job. Story 10. My brother did that in the middle of the night. He would get up, go into the living room, say some nonsense stuff to our parents, and go back to bed. It was actually pretty creepy the first times, because he was like, They are in the walls. They are. I do this too, but I usually wake up as the sentence is coming out of my mouth and realize the convo I'm replying to wasn't real. Then I yell, Never mind, and run away in shame. My one claim to sleep-talking fame is that as I was waking up, I was talking in my dream. So my partner heard me say, out of nowhere, What about, like... A really tall giraffe. I remember saying it. I have no memory of what problem I was facing that I thought might be solved by a really tall giraffe. Story 11. My wife started screaming one night that she was lost in the local grocery store, and that no matter where she went, she couldn't find her way out. I asked her, has she tried checking out at the cash registers? She then looked at me and said in her most sincere voice, that's why you are the smartest person I know. And she rolled over and fell back asleep. Aw, that's super cute. Story 12. I'm the sleep talker here. Got this from my wife the next morning. Me, sits bolt upright. They're coming. Everything's ready. Wife, sleepily. Huh? Me, they're coming. Everything's ready. Wife, they're coming. Me, mm-hmm. Wife, but everything's ready. Me. Yes. 
Sounds like we're okay then. Me comically flops back down and instantly goes back to sleep. The wife seems to have her head together, even when she's half asleep. The fact that she sort of diffused this situation right away was pretty awesome. If only all sleep talkers responded to logic this way. I think it also sounds like the guy might be stressing out about something and it's seeping into his sleep. Story 13. I really like the flow of this conversation, and I know that this is completely unrelated, but the reason it stands out to me is because this is exactly how you're supposed to respond to someone who's delusional, or someone who has Alzheimer's or dementia. There's no reason to challenge what they say, or to make them explain themselves, or to say they're wrong. Just say something calming to reassure them. But everything's ready? Sounds like we're okay then. If you were speaking to someone with severe delusions or advanced aging issues, this would be textbook and beautifully done. Story 14. Not a partner, but in military training and school, I often took the night shift for guard duty. The amount of sleepwalkers and talkers is way freaking higher than I expected. It is straight creepy when you have to walk down the halls with a covered flashlight listening to big old grown men mumbling and lashing out in their sleep. What takes the cake, though, is often sleepwalkers will just kind of stop randomly. So you'll be walking along in the pitch black darkness and suddenly there's just a freaking dude standing there. Eyes generally closed, or worse, open. Just kind of listing to the side or leaning against a bedpost or wall. After I'd suppress all the swear words I was about to yell out, nothing much to do but kind of prod them along back to their bed. For all the randomness that is being part of the military, I really didn't expect one of my jobs to be gently tucking my fellow soldiers back into their beds. I know stress usually makes sleep talking or walking worse, and I'm sure military training is likely stressful. Story 15. My wife was mumbling a lot and suddenly shouted, Donkey kick! as she kicked me in the shin. So that was fun. My wife was in her finals week, so she woke up in the middle of the night telling me she discovered a new way to study while sleeping. So I asked her how, and she closed her eyes and went back to sleep. She's presumably not wrong? Yeah, if I had a partner that would kick me or hit me while I was sleeping, I would buy a camera or set something up to record our sleep so I could show them. I'd probably have a hard time trying to go back to sleep next to them again. I also think I'd have to have video evidence in case somebody saw the bruise or something and tried to assume there was some sort of abuse going on in a relationship. Need to get those receipts, I suppose. Story 16 Alright, one time my ex was asleep and starts to snore progressively loud. He startled himself awake and he says out loud to himself, Shut up! I'm sleeping! Oh, I snorted my drink through my nose. Reminds me of the time my dog woke himself up with his own fart. Story 17. When I was a child about five years old, I was sleeping in my parents' bed for some reason, probably a storm. Mom was awake, Dad and I were asleep. Suddenly, my father and I have this cross-sleep conversation while my mom lays between us, quietly freaked out. Dad, you better not take my toys, I mutter angrily. Okay, I won't, my father responds. Don't even touch them. Okay. Not particularly scintillating conversation, but notable for the fact that they were both asleep and still responding to each other. It was like making Alexa and Siri talk to each other. I remember one night, Mom and I sat in the hallway giggling because my brother and Dad were having a sleep conversation in different rooms. Dad, do you still steal here? Brother, can I help you, Dad? Dad, I want to buy some steel. Brother, what? Dad, how much is the steel? Why are you buying clothes in the soup store? Story 18. My grandfather was a hard sleep talker. My grandmother has a funny story. One day, my grandfather, while sleeping, was saying, Do I punch this jerkwad? My mother replied, Yeah, punch him. Then, my grandfather, in his sleep, punched her. I woke up one night when my husband started flailing around in the bed. It shocked me and I shouted, What's wrong? Then he punched me in the face. I yelled out and started crying. Then he woke up and shouted, What's wrong? He dreamt he was being chased and then turned around and punched them. 
My mom, who was in her 80s, often falls asleep in her chair while I'm visiting her. She sleep eats. Not real food, but she goes through the motions of holding a plate and bringing food to her mouth. It's hilarious watching her. I asked her once if it was nice, and she said, yes, it's very tasty. The part about your mom honestly made my heart melt. Have you heard about a girlfriend being mad at a guy because she had a dream where he cheated on her? I somehow think that's related to guys hitting their girlfriends in their sleep. Of course, of course, they did it, but they don't mean it. I think if this becomes the habit, the guy needs to have some sort of recovery plan. Like he better make a mean breakfast in bed or something. Story 19. Heck yes. Please take a seat. My wife was an avid sleep talker for a long time, and her midnight announcements range from simple single words to elaborate speeches. The ones that really stand out to me are waking up in the middle of the night to her suddenly sitting violently up in bed, throwing back the covers and screaming, Tarantula! That will make you very awake very quickly, whispering my name repeatedly, which woke me up so she could share in a hushed, cautious voice, there is an alligator in here. When I expressed my concern, playing along, she told me, still whispering, that it's okay, it's been here before. But my all-time favorite was when, from her perspective, as she later explained, she was dreaming that I was playfully sneaking up on her, and she saw me and was calling me on it. From my perspective, my wife sat up in the middle of the night staring into the darkest corner of the room and said repeatedly in a soft sing-song voice, I see you. My flipping blood froze. Okay, the last one is terrifying. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 20. My girlfriend does a bit of sleep talking. I mentioned a sheep character from Animal Crossing, Dom and she sounded like she was about to cry, saying, He doesn't have hands, which, to be fair, he doesn't. This is the sweetest comment on this thread. Story 21. My mom used to wake me up for school because I'd sleep through my alarms. She has a bunch of stories about weird stuff I've said to her right before waking. He's not here. Check down the street. Just put it on the roof and it'll blow away. My mom has to do this with my younger brother, and most recently he sat up while still asleep, started moving his arms really quickly as though running and said, I am the fastest man alive, Barry Allen! Okay, again, I have to question this. Are they really sleep talking, or are they really just delaying having to get out of bed? Maybe they figure they're already awake, might as well mess with mom. Beats getting up and getting ready for school. Story 22. <sighs> My boyfriend either recites postcodes, delivery driver, or calls the dog in his sleep. So either he's mad no one is responding to his postcode nonsense, or I get a flying 30-kilogram dog to my body. I'd like to imagine that he wakes up and calls the dog just to mess with you. Story 23. My girl woke up one night and said, Did you find your rocks? And I asked her what she was talking about, and she said, I don't know. I'm just trying to make conversation, and promptly went back to sleep. She has no recollection of this. Well, you obviously weren't being talkative enough. Story 24. One night, my boyfriend woke me up in the middle of the night, tapping me on the shoulder. He put his finger on my mouth, whispered, shush, to me, and then pointed at the door and told me, I can hear something. Don't move. Predictably, I nearly pooped my pants. All the worst possible scenarios crossed my mind, and the moment of silence after he shushed me felt like hours. Then he started waving his hands and talking about Tetris. The twirlies, I don't know, and making sure we don't align. And that's how I learned my boyfriend talks in his sleep. The wave of relief that you must have felt after that must have been crazy. Also, I doubt you got back to sleep. I wonder how that situation ended up. Did the guy not tell the girl he sleep talks? Or did he just not know? If he didn't know, then I kind of feel sorry for his upbringing. If he grew up in an environment where no one noticed his sleep talking, that's kind of sad. It feels lonely. Story 25. Husband woke up in the morning and told me about a crazy dream he had. 
We were hosting a party and he was serving cookies. He was upset that nobody was eating them. When we went downstairs, we discovered a full plate of cookies sitting on our dining room table. That would be the best discovery ever. So he was right. No one was eating his cookies. How rude. Story 26. Years ago, my wife was mumbling in her sleep and seemed a bit upset. I wanted to comfort her without waking her up too much, so I said, Honey, you're fine. Do you know where you are? She slugged me in the arm and said, I'm in a place where punch buggies are seen first. She then rolled over and muttered to herself, Chugga, 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 buggy, and went back to sleep. She didn't remember a thing the next morning. Anyone that says chugga, 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 buggy is a keeper. Stay awesome, dudes. She just sounded so defiant. She sounds like a woman that keeps you on your toes in a relationship. She seems to have the drop on you even while she's sleeping. I agree, she sounds like a keeper. Story 27. No gems, just horrors. I sleepwalk once in a while, but apparently when I was a toddler, I used to sleepwalk, cry, and say, She's following me! Or just try to leave the house by myself. Nowadays, if it happens, I wake up looking at my reflection in the mirror in the dark. When that happens, it freaking creeps me out, so I won't sleep the rest of the night. Story 28. Not a partner, but... One o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call from my friend in the next street. My six-year-old daughter had just knocked on her door and then walked in mumbling about not being able to do her sums. I raced up there and walked home with her and put her back to bed, and she didn't wake up or remember anything the next day. By the next night, our house was like Fort Knox. Reminds me of my sleepwalking incident. When I was that age, my babysitter was out walking with her boyfriend at 10 p.m. and found me curled up, sleeping on the sidewalk a block away from our house. They picked me up and brought me home, and apparently I had turned on every light as I left. Fort Knox? After that incident, my dad had to climb through the kitchen window if he had to work late. All the doors had latches out of my reach. Story 29 when my girlfriend and I started dating, she told me that she's been told she talks in her sleep from time to time, and unfortunately has nightmares fairly often. One of the first nights we spent together, she wakes up at 2 a.m. and sits up super fast. It wakes me up, and I look over only to hear her quickly say, Pizza. Order a pizza. Then lie back down and start snoring within a minute. God, I love that woman. It's a nightmare to order pizza at 2 a.m.? If that's the case, I've had nightmares for the past 20 years. I'd say keep monitoring the situation. See what other good ideas she comes up with at 2 a.m. Story 30. He farted very loudly and proceeded to say, You got the wrong guy. Of all the ones I've read, though, this one gives me a genuine chuckle. Story 31. My wife will tell me the next day when I do this. Her favorite story to tell is that she woke up in the middle of the night to find me slowly walking out of our bedroom. Wife. Are you okay? What are you doing? Me. There's somebody downstairs in the kitchen, unrolling the tin foil. Wife. Okay. What's your plan? Me. I'm going to stop them. Wife. Shall we get a bit more sleep, then both go down together? Me. Okay. And I went back to bed. Subsequent investigations found a small plastic bag on the floor near my head being rustled by the movement of the curtain, the window being open. Story 32. My boyfriend is bilingual, and sometimes I catch him sleep-talking in Punjabi. I've never heard him sleep-talking in English. He also once punched me in the middle of my spine while fully asleep. When he woke up, he claimed in his dream he was giving his mum CPR. He sometimes also suffers from night terrors. It happened often when we first started dating, almost every time he slept or napped, but it hasn't happened for probably over a year. It happened like two nights ago when he just started screaming like a banshee in his sleep. It was wild and terrifying. Story 33. My boyfriend woke me up the other day by gently putting his fingers in my mouth and I kept moving my head out of the way until eventually I was like, can you stop that? He then sounded genuinely upset and asked why I woke him up as he was having a really nice dream about feeding a deer. <laughs> Brilliant. Story 34. My boyfriend sat bolt upright in bed in the middle of the night. He doesn't usually sleep talk. 
Him. There's a thing over there. Me. Absolutely pooping myself. What thing? Him. Upgrade. Me. Relieved, but very confused. What kind of upgrade? Him. Bag. Me. Oh, a bag upgrade. Okay. Carry more stuff. Him. Yeah. He then flopped down and began snoring, letting me slowly recover from the massive spike in heart rate. Your boyfriend sitting up in a dark room and looking at the corner saying, there's a thing over there, is not fun. Turns out he'd just been playing too many games. Meanwhile, there really was a thing over there who was very relieved you didn't investigate. Story 35. Napping with a boyfriend. A loud noise wakes me, but he's still out. Me. What was that? Him. Either a tree or a magic eraser. Mr. Clean hiding in your closet, looking real nervous after that. Story 36. My boyfriend once blurted out, You're putting bread in my ears, in his sleep, mumbled something unintelligible, and then followed up with, And I'm becoming a sandwich. Still makes me laugh whenever I remember. Story 37. Fantastic sleep songs with lyrics which are utterly bizarre. My two absolute favorites have been, one, Oh, whoa, whoa, it's a corner cat. Two, obey my rules and you'll always be a country cowboy. Repeated about five times and finished with a, yeah. Corner cat is amazing. That might make it into a song of mine. Story 38. I had a dream that my girlfriend was biting my neck playfully. I didn't want that, so I push her gently off and tell her to stop. Soon after, I woke up and she was holding her eye and crying. She said I just pushed her, sat upright, and straight punched her in the face. She said she wasn't too hurt, but was extremely confused. Story 39 I'd be the king of Monaco! My wife said this one night out of nowhere. The funniest part was her tone of voice, proud and assertive, like she was really sure of her claim to the throne. Anyway, the joke's on her. Monaco is a principality. Story 40. Ex-roommate talked in his sleep. Once he cried out, No, Gandalf! Don't tempt me, Frodo! What are you doing, Step Frodo? Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.